Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, Wu Jiao Lian Wan Today we're going to talk about purchasing power parity, also known as PPP. Now, bottom line first, here's the idea. Suppose you have two countries, country A and country B. Now, suppose the price level in country A is stable, there is no inflation there. But country B, because this government prints more money, so it has a higher inflation rate than country A. Then, purchasing power parity tells you that country B's currency should depreciate against country A's currency. So here's the intuition. If your government prints a lot of money, then we know that from macroeconomics, the more money the government prints, the less valuable the currency. And therefore here, country B's government prints more money than country A, and country B's uh, currency becomes less valuable than country A's currency. Then of course, country B's currency should depreciate against country A's currency. Now we're going to take a look at the example. Now suppose in year zero, the base year, a basket of goods is sold for $500 in the United States. And exactly the same basket is sold for 50,000 Japanese yen in Japan. Then you can guess that, well, exchange rate must be such that $1 can get you 100 Japanese yen so that this exactly the same basket is sold for the same price after you convert that into the same currency. So you know that a dollar will get you 100 Japanese yen in the base year, year zero. Or if we want to treat the Japanese yen as a commodity, we can say the price of one Japanese yen is equal to 0.01 dollars in year zero. So that's exchange rate in year zero. What about year one? Suppose in year one, the same basket is still sold for $500 in the United States. So in the United States, there is no inflation. But in Japan, the same basket is now sold for 55,000 Japanese yen. And the basket is exactly the same. So you know the price level has increased by 10% in Japan. Whereas there is no inflation rate in the United States. So, the purchasing power parity tells you, well, it must be that um, you can get 110 Japanese yen by a dollar because, well, um, 55,000 divided by 500 will give you 110. And you can use a formula to calculate that. So, and now we can find the target exchange rate of year one by using the exchange rate of year zero as well as the price level in the U.S. and in Japan in both year one and year zero. So here is our exchange rate in year zero. So we know that the price of one Japanese yen is equal to 0 0.01 dollars, and that's it. Now the price level of U.S. in both year one and year zero was 100 because, well, there is no inflation. So in the base year, we say the price is 100. Then in year one, it's also 100 because there is no inflation rate. And in Japan, we know that there is a 10% um, increase in the price level. And therefore, the price level in year zero was 100, but uh, the price level in year one was 110. And after you calculate that, you'll find that the target exchange rate in year one is equal to 1 yen is so for $0.00909. And that's exactly the same as $1 for 110 Japanese yen. And that's right here. So that is purchasing power parity. I hope you use the intuition first. If a country has a higher inflation rate, that means, well, the government prints too much money. If you print a lot of money, that means that your money will be worth less, and therefore your currency should depreciate against the other country's currency. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.